Welcome back to our lectures on data analysis for biologists. In this lecture, I will show how to implement nonlinear regression using R. I will perform two types of nonlinear regression. One is a polynomial regression, that one the I will perform first, and then I will move into a nonlinear least square problem. So, let us start with nonlinear. Uh, regression of for polynomial uh, equations or what we call polynomial regression. So, if you remember there can be some time the data where I, y suppose is the uh, dependent variable and x is the independent variable and you want to fit that data to some uh, equation polynomial for example, y equal to a plus b 1 into x plus b 2 into x square plus b 3 into uh, x cube something like that. right? So, this is a polynomial and you want to fit your data to that polynomial. I will load a data set and plot that and then it will be self evident that why I want to go for polynomial regression for that particular problem. So, in my working directory there is a data file called yield.csv. Let me give a, a brief introduction to this data. Uh, somebody has performed some experiments on suppose chemical reaction at different temperatures. Right? And at different temperatures, the yield of the reaction has been measured. So, I have just two variables, yield and temperature. Temperature is the independent variable, you can call it x, and whereas the dependent variable is the yield and it depends upon temperature. So, I will first read that CSV file using read.csv and then I will plot that data and then I will decide why I need a polynomial regression for this and what type of polynomial I will go for. So, here I am calling the uh, read.csv function to read this csv file and storing that uh, data to a variable called yd. Uh, let me check this data yd, uh, this is a two column data set, first column is the temperature 50, 70 something like that, these are the temperature in at which the experiment has been performed and the next column, the next variable is yield and we have 15 observations here. Now, I uh, will plot that data as a scatter plot. So, I am using the plot function, uh, the x variable, the horizontal uh, uh, variable, axis is, uh, variable is the temperature. So, I am writing y d, y d is the variable and I am asking the uh, temperature of, from that and y d is storing the data from that I am calling the yield variable. So, that will be the vertical axis. I am labeling x axis with temperature and I am labeling y axis as yield and I want to use red colored and open circle I want to use that is why uh, p c h is equal to 1 and the size of these symbols is equal to 2. So, here is my plot, let me uh, zoom it to uh, see it clearly, uh, let me expand it a bit. Okay. So, what we can see here is that see the temperature is increasing from 50 to 100 and if you look into the data the yield is slowly decreasing from 50 and going almost like minimum at 70 and then it is again increasing. So, the data is something like this a conic section right you can imagine a part of a circle or something like that. So, that means this is a uh, this is some sort of conic section equation will fit here. So, I will go for a quadratic equation and quadratic equation is a second order polynomial. A quadratic equation will have y equal to a plus b 1 into x plus b 2 into x square. There will not be x cube x to the power 4 something like that, we will stop at x square. right? So, that is my equation, that is the polynomial I want to fit to this data and that is why I have to perform polynomial regression. Now, uh, so what I am trying to fit is that I want to uh, fit a quadratic equation and let me uh, write it uh, shown it in written form. So, I want that yield is equal to a, a is a intercept a constant into b 1 uh, plus b 1 into temperature plus b 2 into temperature square. Now, if you remember from my lecture on nonlinear regression, polynomial regression is one of the simplest nonlinear regression because here we will perform same linear regression, but with a trick. The trick is uh, see I have temperature data. So, this uh, temperature square will be considered as an independent variable. So, that means I can consider uh, temperature as uh, one variable independent variable and temperature square as another independent variable. So, this equation becomes yield equal to a plus 
b1 into one independent variable plus b2 into another independent variable. So, it is just nothing but multiple linear regression. So, that means I can use the LM linear model function of R just that I have to tell the LM function that see I do not have multiple independent uh, variable, I have just one independent variable, but you have to create multiple independent variable from the data. That means I have to tell it that see temperature should be one independent variable and you will generate temperature square and consider that as another independent variable. Right? And I will use the same LM function. So, how do I uh, implement that? So, here uh, what I will do, I will use the IM function within the LM function. Let me explain what uh, with the script. So, I am calling the LM function and if you remember when you call the linear model function, the first thing you have to define is the model, the linear model. So, yield is the dependent variable, that is why I have written yield, then tilde right. So, e, uh, uh, tilde is after the yield. So, yield is the dependent variable here and then I am defining the independent variable. I have said temperature is a independent variable plus i in bracket I am writing temperature square. This i function and temperature square written inside it will tell the LM that see I have temperature data. I have the variable called temperature. Take that and square it and use it in this model as a independent variable. This is how you define the model. And then uh, obviously by default it will consider an intercept and the data is the OID. Right? And then what I will do after performing the uh, linear model uh, uh, regression, linear regression using uh, this LM function, I will store the whole data in MD1 variable. That is why I am using the assignment sign here and then I will extract the summary of MD1. I will implement them both of them together. So, I have got the summary result of my regression. It is a polynomial regression, but it is just like multiple linear regression. And if you look at the output of the summary, this is say you must have seen it earlier when I was do, doing simple linear regression or multiple linear regression. The important thing that we have to notice here is that the estimated coefficients values, the intercept is the constant is 7.96 temperature, the coefficient of temperature is minus 0.15, right. Remember, initially when the temperature increases, the yield falls, right. That is why this minus is there. And then temperature square, the coefficient of that is a positive value and that is equal to 0 0.00107. And it has performed the statistical test and as you can see the p value for all these three estimated coefficient, uh, they are all uh, passing the statistical test and that means all these uh, coefficient are statistically significant and I have to keep all this term in my quadratic equation. You can look into adjusted R square, you can do the confidence interval of this coefficient. I am not going into those, but you can do all those things because it is nothing but the uh, simple LM function that you have used earlier for a linear regression. What I will do now, I will show you another way of defining uh, the uh, same model and using the LM function. See, if I have a law, law you know, lengthy polynomial, suppose I have uh, uh, up to the uh, eighth order, x to the power 8, x to the power 7, all these things are there, then you have to repeatedly write those things in your equation, right? i in x square, i x cube, something like that. That is tedious. There is a function called poly. And I will use that function to do a shortcut and I will show it here. So, again I am using the LM function and then first thing I am doing is I am defining the model. Here what I am doing, I am writing yield tilde, yield is the dependent variable and it depends upon a polynomial. That is why I am asking uh, the poly function, polynomial of temperature, polynomial of temperature that is I am saying at the first argument of poly. So, the first argument of poly function is temperature and 2, 2 is the highest order that I want in the polynomial and then I am saying raw equal to true. I will explain why I have to write this one. The poly function has been created to create something called orthogonal polynomial. We will not go into the detail of that and the mathematics of that. Just to tell you that orthogonal polynomial are many a time very useful in power form polynomial regression. 
So that is why poly function has been created and it has other utilities also. So when you give a data and you define what is the independent variable and you define the order and you call the poly function, it creates a orthogonal polynomial for that particular independent variable. Now, in this case, I do not want it to create orthogonal polynomial, but what I am asking it that see you do not need to calculate orthogonal polynomial, you use the raw form, you use the raw data and create a polynomial. So, that is why I am saying raw equal to true. So, it will not create orthogonal polynomial, but it will simple uh, polynomial that we have created just a uh, few seconds back in the other, other example where I have used i. Uh, so, that same polynomial it will create. So, it will not create orthogonal polynomial, it will create the normal polynomial for temperature up to the second order that means the quadratic equation. Right? So, now you can imagine suppose I have to use up to 8th order, so I can simply write replace 2 by 8 and by one simple uh, call, uh, function call of poly, it will create that polynomial. And again as uh, I have to define the data for LM function, the data is same, uh, data is yd. Uh, I will execute that uh, regression and then I will extract the uh, summary of that uh, by summary function. So, here is the result, again you may check that you will get the same result. Uh, obviously, these are the, the first uh, column is for the coefficient and then the last column here is for the t, uh, p value of the statistical test and all of them are uh, significant. So, I have performed the polynomial regression using the LM function, the linear model function. right? So, now uh, once I have this linear model, that means I have the polynomial regress model, I want to obviously fit that or show that on the plot. right? I have this plot here that I have just created a few, uh, few minutes back. So, I now want to overlay that fitted curve right? and that is what I will do now. To overlay, uh, I have to create some data. Right. So, what I will do, uh, I will create a x vector, vector for the horizontal axis and I am naming it as x v and I am assigning uh, some values uh, from 50 to 100. Why 50 to 100? Let us look into the original picture. Uh, so, the data starts from 50 and ends at 100. So, I want to create numerical values from 50 to 100 with an interval of 0.1. So, that is point 0.1, the third argument of sequence function. So, this sequence function will create a series of numbers starting from 50 to 100. So, it is a vector and the increment is point 0.1 and I am saving that in x v. Now, I will use this x v, this uh, 50 to 100 uh, se uh, sequence as an input to my regressed model. right? Because in the regressed model, I have got a polynomial. So, in that polynomial, there is a, a, a independent variable right, which is temperature. So, this x v will be each value of this x v will be one of the uh, case of those independent variable. right? So, I will put this individual value of x v and calculate the value of the y v, the yield right? and I will not do it individually, I will do it by one single function which will do the calculation for me. So, to do that, I will call the predict function. So, predict function is something like this. You tell it the model which has the equation in it. A model is nothing but a mathematical equation, right? And then, then you give it the input values, right? So, you want that y equal to a plus b x plus c x square. So, you call predict, give this model and give the different values of x, it will calculate the value of y. So, in this case, I will give uh, the model is MD2, just now I have created that by uh, uh, regression and my data should be here the way they have written the code, my data input data should be a data frame. So, that is why I am calling data frame function and saying that see XV that just now I created a sequence XV is that data and the name of that data is actually temperature. So, temperature variable is equal to x v. So, in my m d 2 model, I have a polynomial equation, quadratic equation involving temperature. So, now this function will take this value of x v as that temperature and will predict the yield. right? And I want it predict to calculate the response, that means I want to calculate the yield in this case. Fine. So, uh, I will execute both of these together. I have done. So, you can see here 
it has uh, XP I have created 50 to 100 at point 0.1 interval. So, I have 500 data points. Similarly, YAV also has 500 data points, fine. So, now I want to plot this data. So, what I want to do? I want to plot uh, lines as lines will be a function which will pl uh, plot this dot, dot data and connect them by a smooth line. So, lines function I will call the horizontal axis variable is x v, the vertical axis variable is y v, I want the color to be blue and I want the thickness to be 2. Execute it, the figure has been drawn, let me zoom it, you can easily see that the quadratic equation has nicely fitted to my model. This is how you can actually perform polynomial regression by simply using the LM function. Now, I will move to uh, the second part of this lecture where I will perform nonlinear least square, right. Uh, so, I hope you remember what is nonlinear least square. If I have a polynomial, it is very easy to perform polynomial regression using simple linear regression approach, right. But all nonlinear equation will not be polynomial. There can be some complicated functions. One of the commonest function that you face in biology are exponential growth or exponential uh, decay. You cannot actually uh, perform regression for them by uh, using polynomial regression. In that case, this approach of nonlinear regression, nonlinear least square becomes very useful. So, I will load the data, explain the data and then it will be obvious that I, why I want to go for uh, nonlinear least square and what type of equation I want to fit. So, in this data what we have? We have some experiment where we have measured the growth of plant uh, over the weeks, right? And the growth has been measured in terms of suppose mass, right? Uh, so, I will have a mass versus uh, the growth versus uh, the time plot and I want to fit a curve to the smooth curve to that. Uh, so, let me load the data. The data is in plant.csv. So, it is a csv file. I am calling a read.csv function and storing that data as a variable uh, plant. Let us check that data. Uh, this is a two column data. The first column is weak, weak is the first variable. Uh, so, it will be my independent variable and the mass, mass is the measure of growth of the plant in this case and this is the second column and I have 16 observations, right. So, I will plot that data uh, using that simple plot, uh, scatter plot function plot and in the horizontal axis I will put the weak and on the vertical axis I will put the mass and I will label them as uh, weak and uh, mass with color red and other things as I have done for the earlier figure. So, here is the plot. Let me zoom in. You can see how it is behaving. It is behaving the way usually growth of a organism behaves, right? Initially, there can be sharp rise, sharp, sharp growth that is almost like exponential growth and then it starts saturating, right? So, I have a growth initially growing very fast, the uh, slope is very high and then it saturates and saturates almost like at 25, maybe if I have, we have done the experiment for a long time, it may have settled at 26, 27, something like that, right? So, what type of equation we want to fit to this? Uh, there are standard equations uh, which uh, have been used and there is a reason why we use those uh, to fit this type of growth model. So, the equation that I will fit here is written here. I want to fit an equation where the mass is the dependent variable. So, mass is equal to A, A is a constant into 1 minus exponential of minus b into weak. Weak is the uh, independent variable, right? So, this is the form y equal to a into 1 minus exponential of minus b x. So, this type of equation will actually fit very well uh, to a growth phenomena of a organism. So, I want to fit this equation to my data that I have shown in the plot just now and I want to use non-linear least square method because I cannot use a, a polynomial regression for this. To perform non-linear least square, what I will use? I will use a function called NLS LM. 
it is there is a, another function in built in R which is called NLS non-linear least square function, uh, but I am using a special function which use a LM algorithm. So, the, the name of the function is NLS LM and it is not uh, by default comes with the R. So, you have to install min pack dot LM package. I have already installed it. You know how to install the extra packages. Please install it before you execute this uh, 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 script. So, I have installed it. Now, I will call this. I will load this uh, uh, package in my workspace. So, let me load it. I have loaded the library. Now, I will call this NLS uh, LM function will give some argument to perform non-linear least square using LM algorithm. So, what should be the arguments for this function? The first argument just like linear model function is to define the model and I have done that here. I am saying mass tilde. So, mass is a dependent variable and it is a function of a into 1 minus exponential um, of e to the power minus b into weak. So, this is my this first argument is my model and then comma and then I am defining the data. Data is the planned variable. Now, when you are doing non-linear least square, it is actually using an optimization algorithm. It is not a linear regression that you, you have learned in the uh, earlier and used them. It is an optimization algorithm it is using and to perform our optimization, you have to specify a starting point, but specify the starting value of the unknown. So, in my model, the unknowns are a and b, these two coefficient. So, I have to specify these two and I have to specify them correctly or not uh, correctly, judiciously I will say, so that uh, you know uh, the optimization algorithm converge to a result very easily. Now, you can uh, ask how should I guess this value? Yes, in most cases it may be very difficult to guess, but in this particular example, I can actually guess at least something I can guess. Let me look into this. Uh, so, see the data is saturating is near 25, right? remember that. Now, let us look into the equation that we are uh, fitting. My model is a into 1 minus exponential minus b into weak. So, when weak will become very large, means suppose weak is infinity, then this whole term becomes 0. right? So, then this mass will be equal to a. So, that is what is happening as time is becoming very big, it is saturating as uh, to uh, 25. So, I am guessing A may be 25 and whereas B I have given a you know rational size value, you I could have given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. Obviously, I will not give 900 or 600, that does not make sense, right. Uh, from experience, we have learned maybe the value may be 2, 3 or 5 or something like that. So, I have given 9. So, I will execute that and uh, uh, then what I will do? I will plot that uh, data, fine. So, here I perform that nonlinear uh, least square, it has performed like a uh, wink uh, very fast. Now, let me see the result by calling summary. So, my nonlinear model is stored in a experiment dot mod right exp mod dot mod. So, I will call the summary function to see the summary of this result. Let us look into the result. So, this is the formula that is the model it has fitted that is what we wanted. Now, the first column give me the estimated parameters. So, a I guessed 25 and it is saying 26.8 roughly correct right. Our logic was that it is saturating near 25. So, it is 26.8 roughly 27 and b is 0.17. It has also performed a statistical test and you can see the probabilities are given for the null hypothesis and you can reject the null hypothesis in both cases. That means, both the coefficient a and b which are estimated are statistically significant. Uh, this uh, information is good enough for us to now proceed and plot the result. So, I have the nonlinear model now. So, I will plot that on an overlay over the existing diagram. So, in the previous example, we created two vectors, right? The one is the horizontal axis vector x vector, where I have different uh, data points, and then we use those data point as an input to predict the uh, uh, vertical axis data, right? So, we will do the same thing here. 
So, uh, my if you look into our data, it starts from somewhere uh, around 1 and ends around 15 or 16, right? Something like that. So, what I am doing, I am uh, using the sequence function to generate a series of number 1 to 16 with an increment of 0.1 and I am storing that as a xv variable. And now, again, I am calling the predict function and I am giving the model that just now I created by nonlinear least square as a model. Uh, right. So, that model has already this exponential equation inbuilt there and I am creating a data frame where I am saying see this x b vector that I created is equal to the weak variable. So, every data point of this x b variable will be used as a value of weak and will be used to predict the value of uh, the uh, mass of the plant or y the uh, vertical axis data from this nonlinear least square model. So, and then the whole thing will be stored in the yv variable. So, I execute that. Okay, I have not executed the xv. So, I have to first create the xv. xv is created. Now, yv. So, I will plot these two as a line, smooth line. right? So, for that I will call the lines function. I will have xv and yv as horizontal and vertical axis data uh, respectively. Color will be blue and I want a line thickness lwd equal to 2. So, let us uh, zoom into the plot. You can see so nicely this blue line which has been created uh, from the uh, nonlinear least square uh, model is fitting with the data. So, that is all for this uh, particular lecture. Uh, in this, we have performed two types of nonlinear regression. One is polynomial regression, where we have used the same old linear model function to perform polynomial regression. And I have also shown a nonlinear least square using NLS LM function for a exponential model. I hope you will try this script and with a different data set and practice them yourself. Thank you for joining me today and learning something new.